magicians weren't born with the knowledge of how to perform magic. Someone had to teach them how to do, to do their tricks. And before that, someone had to create the tricks. After all, magic tricks and illusion didn't appear out of thin air. Someone had to figure out what they wanted a trick to be, then how to perform it, and then make it so, so amazing that it will fool everyone. So who came up with these magic tricks? For the answer to that, we had to go back through history. We had to go back a few thousand years because it turned out that people have been doing magic for a very, very long time. This is one magic trick that has been performed more than any other in history. This trick is performed by all kinds of magicians, whether they are are on a big Las Vegas stage or sitting at a small table on a city sidewalk called Cups and Balls. It is a very simple slate of hand trick. The magician hides balls under cups, then moves up the cup around on a tabletop. When he leaves the cup, the ball has magically switched places or disappeared. Some magicians believe that cups and balls is the oldest, oldest magic trick in the world. They claim there is evidence of it being performed in ancient Egypt. They point, they point to a cemetery called Bani Hassan, located along the banks of the Nile River. The cemetery contains 39 tombs many of which are 4,000 years old. Carved out of the rock hills, the cemetery is historically important because the walls of the tombs were painted with scenes of ancient Egyptian life and contain numerous ancient picture symbols called hieroglyphs. What makes the Bani Hassan Cemetery important to our story is that there is one scene painted on a wall that shows two people facing each other. The people appear to be moving cups in the same way that modern magicians do with cups and balls. While no one knows for sure, many magicians believe that this painting shows Egyptians performing cups and balls more than 40 centuries ago. Ancient Egypt is home to many mysteries and legends. From the Sphinx and the building of the pyramids to the stories of King Tut and Cleopatra. But some of its most incredible legends were about ma magic and about men who may have been the first magicians. These stories were depicted in hieroglyphs on an Egyptian document known as the Wet Scarp Papyrus which was written more than 3,000 years ago. In one story, an advisor to the Egyptian pharaoh makes a crocodile out of wax. When he throws the wax crocodile into the river, it magically comes alive as a real crocodile. In another story, the pharaoh's daughter is riding in a boat. During the ride, she ended accidentally loses a piece of turquoise jewelry when it falls into the water. Her guardians and assistants spend hours looking for it, but no one can find the precious stones. Then another of the pharaoh's advisors shows up to help. This man does something unheard of. He folds the water in half. The turquoise can be seen at the bottom of the river and it is recovered. The advisor then folds the water back into place. The most intriguing story of magic from the Westcar Papyrus is about Daddy. A man living quietly in a small Egyptian village, Daddy is said to be 110 years old. He has huge appetite eating 500 loaves of 
bread and 200 pounds of meat a day. What makes him even more unusual, unusual though is that he has the power to remove the reattach and reattach the heads of animals without killing them. When the pharaoh named Khufu hears of this, he summons Dedai to his palace. On the day Dedai arrives, Khufu asks that a criminal be brought to the palace from a local jail. He wants Dedai to cut off the prisoner's head and then reattach it. But Dedai refuses Khufu's request, saying that such things should not be done to people. The pharaoh agrees and comes up with, with a different idea. He, he orders that a duck be, be brought to the palace, then a goose, then, a, then an ox. Each of the animals is decapitated one after another, and Dedai speaks magic words over them. Suddenly their heads are reattached to their necks, and they come back to life and are perfectly normal. The duck and goose fluttered out of the palace while the ox slowly walks away. Amazed by Dedai's powers, Khufu invites Dedai to come live in the palace. From then on, Dedai is fed a thousand loaves of bread and an entire ox every day. Many other ancient cultures also had stories about men and sometimes women who did things that no one else could do. Ancient Greece had people called oracles, a sort of holy magician who could predict the future. Priests in the Aztec and Incan civilization of South America had powers that allowed them to talk to their gods. Many of these legendary magicians were believed to control the, the sun and the weathers and even life and death. The most famous of these men was a magician named Merlin. His legend and popularity over the centuries has been so great that Merlin has served as the inspiration for every long-bearded wizard and trusted advisor you've ever heard of. From Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings to Harry Potter's mentor, Albert Stumbledore, Merlin was said to have lived in the 6th century when he helped the young King Arthur rule over Britain, what is now England, Scotland, and Wales. Merlin served as Arthur's teacher and guided the king on his many adventures. Stories about the wizard said that his mom was human and his father was a spirit, which was why Merlin could perform magic and create illusions. He could change his shape, protect Arthur with spells, and he see into the future. He is even credited with creating the famous Stonehenge rock formation in England by moving its monstrously huge stones all the way from Ireland, which is hundreds of miles away over the water of the Irish Sea. The problem with these astounding stories is that no one is quite certain whether King Arthur, let alone his trusty side Merlin, ever really existed. There are no documents from the time to prove that were actually people. True or not, Merlin has been the model for many magicians in literature and in the movies for more than a thousand years. Like Merlin, these wizards and sorcerers were able to cast spells, create potions, potions and change people into animals and animals into people. They wore pointed hats and long robes decorated with stars and moons, and it was often their job to protect a young prince or king or a youngster on a quest. Wizards like Merlin practice only good magic, also known as a white magic. On the opposite side of the mystical world from good wizards 
for witches and warlocks who practice bad, bad or black magic. These magicians were said to get their powers from evil spirits, and they use this magic to harm them, their enemies or make themselves more powerful. They prefer to do their work at night when their their evil deeds and meetings would, with demons would be hidden by darkness. The fears of black magic was rampant during a period of history known as the Dark Ages. During the Dark Ages from the 5th century to the 12th century, much of Europe was in ruins. Entire countries had been destroyed by wars, disease, plagues, and famine. Many regions of the continent had no laws or governments. Stroll had all but vanished, and living conditions were awful. People had very little strolling and a poor understanding of the world around them. They put their faith in superstition. Belief in magic was widespread, in part because it was an easy explanation for every kind of mysterious occurrence. The occurrences could be anything from a natural event such as an earthquake to the ability of a man to make a coin disappear. Even simple juggling was considered a form of magic. At this time, Europeans believed that good things came from God and bad things came from the devil. Many churches in Europe even claimed that magicians were friends of the devil. Surely, the churches stated that no one could make objects vanish by uttering a few words and waving their hands. Even priests who were supposed to be able to communicate directly with God could not do this, since God didn't give men and women magical powers. There was only one explanation for magicians. They must have gotten their special powers from the devil. The thinking was that magic magicians probably had to sell their souls to the devil in return for being able to create magic. Because fear and superstitions were rampant in the dark ages, anyone who acted strangely or looked different was often suspected as practicing black magic, which hunts occurred regularly throughout Europe as religious sought to destroy anyone they thought might be a witch. Many suspected witches were arrested and executed. No proof of their guilt was needed. If a man didn't like a woman in his neighborhood, he might accuse her of flying through the air or claim she had turned him into a newt. The accusations alone was enough to have the woman thrown in jail. One of the first magicians to be accused of associating with the devil was a man named Tristolinus. While performing for King Charles VI of France in the mid-1500s, Tristolinus made rings disappear from the fingers of one of the king's attendants. The rings magically reappeared in Tristolinus' hands even though he was on the other side of the room. In a fit of horror, the audience grabbed the magician. They threatened to kill him if he did not confess that the devil had helped him with the trick. To save his life, so the story goes, Tristalinus confessed. On a smaller scale, there were a real crook they were real crooks who used the simplest type of magic, sleight of hand, to rob unsuspecting townspeople. Not surprisingly, the cups and balls trick showed up in the hands of these criminals. A painting by Dutch artist Hiero Nimas, Bosch from around 1500, called The Conjurer, depicts an event that involves both magic and stealing. In some translation, this painting 
is called the magician. A magician is known at a table with cups and bowls in front of him. He has just caused a small frog to appear from the mouth of mouth of a man in the audience, and another frog sits quietly on a table. He is obviously a magician who is good at what he does. On a close examination, though, the painting is not about the magician's trick. In the back of the audience is another man, who looks like he is not very interested in what is going on. That is because he is taking the coin purse from, from an old man's belt. The pig pot, pig portrait and the magician are likely working together, and the magic show is a way to distract people, so their valuables can be stolen. In addition. So, being called friends of the devil, now magicians were also called cheats, liars, and thieves. Their reputation had gotten so bad that the magician was regularly thrown in jail, and in some cases even executed. Abracadabra is a word with no meaning. But it was. It has been used as a magic word for centuries. No one is sure where the word originated, but we know it was used as far back as the second century. That was when a man named Quintus Serenus Simonisus wrote a magical book stating that the word abracadabra had magical powers and could cure diseases. Abracadabra could not just be shouted out at random, though. For the word to work, it had to be written repeatedly in a triangle pattern on a piece of paper or cloth. With each line of word having one few letter than the one above it, at the bottom the only remaining word should be an A. This writing had to be worn around the patient's neck for nine days, after which it was supposed to be tossed into a river. Only then would the sufferer be cured. Part of the belief in Abracadabra came from the fact that it diminished to nothing when written as prescribed, which was also what was supposed to happen to the disease. This may have inspired early magicians to use the word when they made some something disappear during the performance. Shouting a magical word just as a trick was revealed was a way to add flair to the moment. Abracadabra, being a nonsense word, worked perfectly. It had a long, albeit ineffective, history of being used as a magical cure. Yet it wasn't a common word or phrase, like "look" or "see here" or "get ready for this." It was also a word that has pleasing to the ear, caused by all the short a sounds, and long enough that the magicians could say it for several seconds to drag out the tension of a trick. It could also be made. To sound either mysterious or playful, depending on what effect the magician wants the trick to have on his audience. Today, abracadabra is used by magicians all over the world, but the word has also entered common use. People say it to reference doing something seemingly impossible. For example. So you're just going to Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi fly to Mars, or I can spend ten minutes online and Abu Dhabi. I will be able to speak fluent Mandarin. No matter what its use, Abu Dhabi has a magical quality. It will always be the most important word in a magician's bag of tricks. Here is trick number one: cups and balls. 
The audience thinks that three balls pass through the solid cups. The key to the trick is that there are actually four balls. Here's how to perform it. Start with three stackable cups like plastic or paper cups. Make sure they're not clear or the trick won't work. It also helps if they're white on the inside. Next, take four small squishy balls or if you don't have them, take a napkin and tear it into four equal parts and crumble each part into a tiny ball. Line the three cups right next right side up on the table with one ball sitting in front of each cup. While you are setting this up, slip the fourth ball into the middle cup. You can also do this earlier. Just don't let anyone see the ball inside the cup. Also try to keep some distance between you and the audience so you can't get too close or see over the top of the cup. Now flip the cup upside down. If you do this fast enough, the ball stay in the middle and not drop out. It will be hidden under the middle cup and no one will know. Place the ball that's sitting in front of the cup, front of the middle cup, on top of it, on the bottom of the cup, then stack the cups one after another on top of the middle cup. The ball you place on top of the cup is now sandwiched between the first and the second cups. Lift the whole stack and the ball you hit in the middle cup will now be revealed, making it appear that the ball you just placed on the top of the cup somehow passed through it. Remember, the audience didn't know that the ball was already underneath the middle of the cup. Now that you've done this, tilt the stack in your hand so it's facing upwards. Open side towards the ceiling and pull them apart to place them back in a row upside down, making sure the second cup goes over the ball that was just revealed. What happens is that the ball you placed on the top of the cup earlier is now in the second cup and by tipping it over the first ball, you've now got two balls under the cup. Again, the audience doesn't know this. Repeat this stack and add another ball on the middle cup. Stack the cups again, lift them up and reveal two balls. Do it again and then all three balls end up under the cups. Put the cups apart, don't let anyone see the fourth ball still sits inside the second cup.